It's 2018, December the 16th. It is about half past three in the afternoon. Uh, we're going to do a, an irregular hike. We're going to try to find the Tierkloof waterfall. Um, almost directly north from us at the moment, in shot, is the old toll house that's burned down in the recent 2018 fires near George. Um, we are on the Montague Pass Road and turning towards the east. And that's the path we're going to follow. Um, I'm not familiar with this path. Apparently, it will go across that hill according to all I've been told, but we'll have to see when we get there. Okay, here goes. It is now about 10 to 3 um, and we've reached a T junction. And this is the way looking forward coming down the hill. There's the river at the bottom and looking straight up the hill there's a pylon ahead of us and George Peak in the background. And then looking to the left hand side, turning north, that's the path we're deciding to follow. There's one of the old uh, foot tracker markers along the way, a pile of stones that's been painted white. Turning around further, that's up the hill towards the west. That's the path that we came. Coming down the hill with all the fire damage, the path is not very clear. My advice is that you rather look further ahead, farther ahead, um, than right down in front at your feet. Um, so that you can get a better idea of which direction to go. Um, turning around further towards the southwest, there's another foot tracker marker. And that's towards the south. And coming back around, following the horizon to the east, there's the pylon again. It is just before three o'clock. Um, we've reached the river. This is the way straight across the river, turning north. There's one branch of the river coming in and immediately next to it there's another branch coming in. That's the path along which we came. Not very clear. Turning all the way around. The opposite side of the river, the opposite, opposite bank gets very steep towards the south. We've decided not to go that way. Although we're not quite sure where the path goes, we've decided to turn north and head up river. It's just about three o'clock now and turning towards the west, there seems to be a path coming in from our left hand side. And this might be the path that comes down from the old toll house directly, the one that we did not choose today. Turning to the north, that's upriver, and then the path apparently goes over this little rock patch over here, up on the other side. The path coming up the river is not very clear. As you can see, we had to do a bit of bundu bashing to get to this point, just for about five meters or so. turning towards the east and going across the river. There we go. This is just on the other side of the river. The way ahead looks like that, going uphill. It is a much clearer path than what we've been traveling on at the moment. Turning around that southwest, turning around to the west. Here is the river that we've just crossed. There's that rock patch that I mentioned. And Turning around north, up the river, and through the bushes, back towards the east, up the hill, and southeast.
that's about 10 past 3 and uh, that's the way ahead towards the east still almost at the last bit of the last stretch of the first incline first uphill turning around to south going around to the southwest there about in the middle of the frame you can see three white piles of rocks those are the foot tracker markers that I referred to previously I suspect we came out between the bottom two of them and turning around up the hill trying to find a path I can't really see on the screen with all the ambient light at the moment but I think in the middle of the screen at the moment you can see the path that we follow down and then just a little bit more towards the right hand side of that this is the old tall house it also has a path which you could follow but apparently the bottom part of that is very steep turning around further it's about northwest up the valley for the north showing the top of the mountains there we're not going all the way to the top thankfully because this uphill was quite sufficient thank you Right, going ahead. This is just a couple of paces further up the hill. Um, I think this is a better spot to take in the landmarks. Right in front, you can see the Ifen Tower on the hill, and turning around towards the north, some pylons along the way. So we're heading towards them and up the hill towards the railway line not quite sure how clear the railway line is at the moment in the picture it's on the farther hill running horizontally and then we want to head somewhere that way to the north turning around there you should be able to see us in a bit past perhaps some vehicles coming down the road back to the top ones to the foot tracker, foot tracker markers following the line some pine plantations in the background and literally a couple of meters down the road again here is a two track road going down past the pylon town turning around towards the west that's the path that, that we've come along and up the hill there goes into the other part of the two track road it seems to fizzle out of the bushes in there and all the way around back to the east where we're heading it's about just past quarter past three We've hit uh, T-junction, turning to our left-hand side, going up the hill now. That's about northeast, heading towards George Peak on the right-hand side over there, furthest peak on the right-hand side. Turning around, it's about north, coming around to the west. That's the path along which we've come. And that's towards the southeast T track road, probably meeting up the other T track road, going past the pylon. There's the town again towards the south. Coming around, there's the FM tower, and back the way we're heading. There we go. about 25 past 3 that's the way ahead and we've just reached on the right hand side of the road a marker that says Craddock Pass it's the yellow arrow to the left Craddock Pass is that old foot tracker pass that I refer to with the white rocks and white piles of rocks all along the way this is the way we've come and turning around further Show me, is there, apparently there's a path down, oh yes, here it is. Okay, 
This path goes back down to Witfontein in the Cape Nature office. Um, and right ahead, there where the pine trees sort of make a, make a bend, around that corner you go down the hill on the other side towards the Witfontein Cape Nature office. And I hope to show you that route one day soon. This is the road that you follow from the bottom up from Witfontein Cape Nature office. Follow the road up if you want to go to George Peak and Cullock Peak. Come up this path and you go towards the east. And as soon as there's another turn off, I'll show you where it is. Okay, it looks like we're going around the bend. There's one of our party already. A little bit further up the hill around the bend. Okay. This is another couple of meters along the road. Here's a turn off towards the left hand side up the hill. That's actually not the way to go. Um, that's the way we've come. Turning around further around. There's the town and the pylon. And the pine plantation. And the FM tower behind the branches. I don't think you can see it. And going on ahead. It's about to the right hand side of the road and just behind it is the FM tower turning around towards the north. There's a sign that says George Peak, Craddock Peak to the right hand side following the road that we're going, turning around towards the west along the way that we've come um, and around further to the south, next to the pole in the, to the, by the side of the road, there's a path that goes down, another path that goes down, and let me just get a better shot, behind the bushes over there, there's a pylon, if you follow this path down to the pylon, and then down into the valley to the left, across two streams, and then you'll come up on the opposite side following the diagonal dirt road going to the edge of the pine plantation and you just walk past there. I don't know if you can see it in the shot but directly in front of me now on the opposite ridge, top of the ridge, there are some hikers going up the hill as well towards the left hand side. And that road goes down to the Vetfontein Cape Nature office. complete the circle. There's the FM tower and the road ahead again. It's about 22.4 and just before I lose that shot, there's the FM tower. Just diagonally below it, towards the right hand side, there's a small building. That used to be a, I suppose, a depot house you could call it at the power railway station and a little bit further to the right let's see if I've got the shot right yeah it should be in shot there's a grey cylindrical structure and another one just behind it between the two pylons that used to be those used to be two water reservoirs um, eventually they were converted into a restaurant with a flat roof but um, eventually that fell into disrepair. Um, I presume the thatch roofs have burnt down in the recent fires of uh, last October 2018 and uh, I thought I'd just show you those landmarks so you can get your bearings a little bit better. Turning towards the south, there's the town. You know that pine forest by now. Um, that's the path we've come the hill. That's more or less towards the north. And through the bushes over there, horizontal brown line. It's part of the railway line. We're going up to the railway line but not that part. 
going more towards the north. Okay, and that's the way ahead. About 10 to 4. Um, this is the top of the hill. Coming up the path, it's quite a steep climb. Um, and then you T junction with the railway line, um, turning around. We're going towards the right hand side, to the, towards the left hand side, towards the west along the railway line today. Turning around further, that's the west. And uh, that's quite an expansive view. You can see we've had quite an elevation gain. There's the pine forest. You can see now we can see behind the pine forest where previously we couldn't. Following the path down the hill here. Where is it? There it is. You can see it's relatively steep. There's the pylon at the bottom. Turning around. Coming up on the FM tower. There it is. And around further following the horizon, coming up to George Peak in the background behind the bush, let's get out from the edge, there's George Peak, um, back to the railway line pointing north. This is on the railway line, there's a little sign that says George Peak, Crowley Peak, and you'll follow the railway line towards the east. Uh, just before the bend, you can see there in the distance, you turn off the railway line and go up the hill towards George McCrudder Peak. Turning around further, there's the south again from the town. And coming around, that's the railway line ahead. Things should be fairly level for us now, further on to the Tearcliff waterfall. Um, one of my companions has just informed me that it's about three kilometers up to this point, uh, distance wise, and we've been doing about 2.4 kilometers an hour, um, just for reference. Yeah, it's just about four o'clock. This isn't really a marker. Um, I just thought I'd get the view. Um, there is a very bare mountain. It looks like all the vegetation has been burnt off from the recent fires. That's towards the north, up the valley. And that's towards Ataniqua Pass in the west. And down here at the bottom you can see the new greenery coming out already. New ferns first bit of green growth again after the fires. Yep, there's some um, lens flare. Uh, no. What can I do about that? There we go. I'll throw some shade. And turn around further to the southwest. Onto the railway line. As long as you follow the railway line, you shouldn't be in trouble. Uh, there's not much opportunity to get lost. And that's back around again. It's about quarter past four, and we're coming up on our first tunnel. This is going northwards and turning around to the east. There's a valley among the trees and some running water down in the stream. I'm not sure whether this is the waterfall we're actually looking for. I doubt it though. It is very nice and green down here. The birds seem to like it. Apparently, there are seven tunnels along this railway line. Perhaps one day I'll do a tour of all seven of them in one go. And there's a nice brown mountain stream. Apparently the water is, is that brown color because of all the tannins that uh, get absorbed 
as the water seeped through the ground. It is perfectly drinkable, um, as I say, potable water. This is made by Nair, no? It's like a yeah, this furrow. It's, like it's not made by nature, it's, it's made by man. I suppose it's deliberately like made to divert the water so it doesn't dam up and flood the railway line. Turning around. When you go up Cato Peak, you stand yeah. there and you look yeah. down here. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Seems to be a long dark tunnel. We're getting our flashlights out. Oh yes, I can see the light on the other side. It's just a short tunnel. Might not even need flashlights. There's a little alcove along the way. So if the train comes along, you can duck in there. Get out of harm's way. Here's another alcove. Let's see if I can get some light on that. There we go. So dark, I don't think it actually catches on the on the camera. Except if you point it at the opposite end. There's a little stream of water along the left hand side it seems. I don't know what this video is going to look like when I edit it, but I can see perfectly, even without a flashlight. Some reflection of the roof. From what I understand, these alcoves um, alternate left hand side, right hand side, left hand side, right hand side. So if you ever find yourself in a railway tunnel like this and you hear an oncoming train or before you hear the oncoming train, keep track of where the alcove, the last alcove was. Here's another one on the left hand side. There it is. It's just about big enough for I don't know, about five people to stand side by side. Well, not side by side, but right up against each other, like sardines. There are other longer and darker tunnels along the way for which you definitely need a flashlight. I hope to show them to you someday. It's about 10 to 5 and we've reached a very nice viewpoint towards the west. Uh, there is a fairly steep drop so I need to watch my footing here. Yep, on the ridge. Uh, it's difficult to see with all the ambient light but uh, and you can't blow up to the stone there, eh? with the Oxwagon trail, you, you can see the stone marking. Yeah, on that ridge, in the middle of the screen at the moment, there's some things to look. Um, on that ridge is the Craddock Pass Oxwagon trail, and there should be some white stone piles along that way. I can't see it on the screen at the moment, perhaps when I edit the video. But if I look past the camera, 
I can see the stone piles. Turning around, so I will align the way we've come. Coming back up again. I can see one, two, three, four, five. Five white stone piles along the way. And there's the railway line. We're probably going to go around that bend and follow the Craddock Pass down back home again. It's about five to five, and we have finally tracked down our quarry. There is the Cheekcliff waterfall from the distance. I can hear the water running from where I'm standing. Not quite sure if you can see the water running on the video itself. Um, trying to find the railway line. There it is in the middle of the shot at the moment and following that line horizontally through the bushes a little bit higher horizontally on the other side going around towards the west, Otaniko Pass, down the valley. It's the railway line along which we've come. Okay, so apparently there's another tunnel. I'm panning around to see where it is. Oh, there where I thought where the railway line was. Yeah, that is the tunnel. That is there's a tunnel. No, there it comes out on that side. Okay. That green spot right on the left hand edge of the video at the moment. That apparently is the tunnel's exit. So we've got another tunnel on the way. Alright, here we go. It's just about five o'clock now and we've come across our first little stream in the vicinity of the Tecliff waterfall. coming down from the right hand side out of the mountains. We suspect that this might not be the main waterfall that we're looking for. And that's the way we've come. There's looking down the valley. Take a look over the edge. There's some water splashing. Nothing major. We suspect there might be a bigger waterfall just a little bit further on. Panning around further. Carrying on. about 25 past 5 and um, this is a couple of paces down the track we should start heading home we've got about two hours of daylight left before sunset I'm not quite sure whether this is natural or man-made the wall is definitely man-made. I'm not too sure about the gully. That's the way back, the way we've come. It's about 10 to 6 now. A bit of cloud rising, the fog rolling in. And 
we're going along the railway track still through the tunnel coming up and then down the Craddock Passway hopefully getting home before sundown there's our next tunnel Okay, this one is long and very, very dark. Ooh. Flashlight time. There's our first alcove on the right hand side. I can still see the tracks, but I don't think the lighting is good enough for the video. It is perfectly black on my screen at the moment. There's the wall on the left hand side, fanning towards the end of the tunnel. Okay, it's just before six o'clock. We're heading home now, going through the tunnel. There are the tracks ahead of me. And then the light just becomes too dim for the camera to see, I think. Okay. There's a little light ahead. That's one of my companions. Flashlight. Okay, I can now see light coming in at the end of the tunnel but I don't think the camera is sensitive enough to pick it up. Here's another L curve on the left hand side of the track. There's the end of the tunnel. are my companions with their flashlights up ahead on the tracks. Oh, here's a nice big alcove. There's the top archway. Okay, and there we are, outside again. I can almost not believe that was four and a half minutes. It really didn't feel that long. Perhaps it's with all the stopping and looking at alcoves and shining lights and all of that. Here is a view down into the valley. You can hear some water running down there. There's the railway line on the opposite side. And now we should really be heading back. Enough fun and games for a while. Yeah, it's just about six, uh, five past six, and uh, clouds rolling in, and we've just come across a very nice view of the valley going down. I'm not quite sure if you can see it on the video, but it is a gorgeous view. Is that a pun?
a gorgeous view. Hmm. A view of the gorge. Okay, I'll, I'll stop now. Just about 10 past 6. And um, if you're not aware of it, you're going to miss it. The next turn off is just ahead where my companions are standing. Um, the train tunnel is a little way behind us, not too far. There's a sign on the side of the rocks if you want a marker. So we're going ahead along the way. And the, the Craddock Pass footpath comes down here. And if you don't know about it, you're not going to see it. And then going across the railway line over there. Dropping down here. Trying to find the path. Sounds like my companions are also considering the situation and wondering if we're really on the right track. Yep, it looks like I've got it wrong. Wait, what's this? There is a path going this way. This is definitely a path. Yep, I'm pretty sure this is it. It's turning towards the south, going across the hill. Okay, now you know how not to get lost. It's about 24.6. You can see the fog rolling in thick and fast. Uh, it's not really a problem. We know we're on the right track because we've got these white stacks of rocks on the Craddock Pass. Going downhill is also a little bit quicker than going uphill. We should be home in time. It's about 25 to 7. We have a marker along the way, pointing the way up Craddock Pass. It says 3.3 kilometers. There's a stone marker in the background as well. And you can see we've got fog all around. It's like we're on a little island in the clouds. It's about, well, still just about 25 to 7, and we can see the Montague Pass down below towards the right hand side of the track as we're going downhill. There's another white stone marker. That's the way up the hill from which we've come. And I can hear the vehicles on that Nico Pass in the background. A little bit higher up in the fog. It's about 22.7. There's another pile of rocks, and we're just following the tracks, but um, looks like we're dropping below the clouds now. And you can see the town in the background, perhaps, below the cloud line. And Montague Pass is still on the right-hand side. Still about 22.7. We've just reached another marker, pointing up the trail and it's been damaged in the recent fires but it used to say something to the effect of if you haven't reached this point by two o'clock in the afternoon it's too late to continue 
for your own safety we urge you to turn back and that is pretty good advice and that's the trail we've come it's about quarter to seven there's another stone marker I haven't been recording these stone markers uh, very regularly so there are quite a few that I've missed because you just follow the path it's pretty straightforward um, no pun intended moving along um, from this point you can actually see the well, I can see the toll bus in the middle of the screen uh, it's very close to where we started this afternoon so we might make it before sundown and carrying on Okay, it's about 7 o'clock and we've got some root markers on the way. Here we have Bushbuck Trail going to the right and Crater Pass and the Power Trail left and right. We've come down on the Crater Pass Trail. There it is in the background and the white pile of rocks. Bushbuck and Power Trail going off that way, but we want to go down there apparently and across the stream so we can get to the toll house where it should be somewhere up on those hills over there. There's also another marker here. Craddock Pass, 5.9 kilometers going up to the top. So 5.9 minus 3.3 .3 is about 2.6 kilometers between the two markers that I've recorded. It's about 5 past 7. And this is the way across the river. I'm already on the other side. I forgot to take a photo of her. Um, a scene from the, the starting side. See so you come down behind that tree, come down from the left hand side, and then across this big rock right here in front, and over here. Yep, nope, you can't see the path from here. But there it goes. And then up the hill over there. The rocks might be dry and solid, but these reeds are quite slippery. Don't slip on them. Okay, there we go. Yeah, it's going to be a steep uphill, I suspect. It's about quarter past seven. This is the last stretch towards the, the old toll house. And our friendly chauffeur has just arrived. So, this is about the end of a very pleasant little afternoon hike. I think in future I'll definitely recommend coming down the path directly from the toll house. It is a bit clearer than the one that we started off on. Off on. Um, okay, I'll not go there. And Janine is tackling me. <laughs> Sadly, the old toll house 
suffered substantial damage during the recent fires in October. But I believe there are some, some groups who are working on restoring it. Here we are back on the Montague Pass Road. the way we've come. Some signage, storage, friendly surfeitage, if that's even a word.